Hi everyone, we are going to do bomb calorimetry. This is the one I think that makes my students the most nervous. So I'm hoping I can explain this well and help you. All right, this is a very pathetic drawing of a bomb. <laughs> now it's not the kind of bomb that we're exploding. Um, this is a very, very well insulated container that um, when you do a reaction in it, the majority of the energy actually goes into the water and not into the surroundings. That's the point is that the bomb itself is just a calorimeter and it doesn't absorb a lot of energy. The energy actually just goes straight from the reaction into the water. Um, and honestly, it does look kind of like a big round dome. Uh, sometimes it's going to be cylinder, sometimes it's, it's round. Um, so here it is. Up top, we're going to have the substance that we're going to burn. And in the example that I give you here, we're going to burn sucrose. We're going to burn one gram of sucrose. So you have the substance up top, um, and then down here at the bottom, you have your water. Now, when this combusts, okay, when we burn this in this closed system here, the energy is going to go in two places. It's going to go into the water, and a little bit will still go into the bomb. Um, even though it's really well insulated, there's no, uh, no calorimeter that's going to be perfect. So that energy is going to go in two places. So that's bomb calorimetry. I have my students draw this picture so they can visualize where the energy is moving, right? Where the energy is transferring. Uh, so let's see what we've got over here. Here's our information on uh, the problem. We're going to combust one gram of sucrose. Yay, we love sucrose. Um, it contains, the bomb calorimeter contains right here, 1.5 times 10 to the three grams of water. So 1.5 times 10 to the three grams. And up here, remember, this is our sucrose. And we've got one gram of that. So we're going to burn that. And that energy, when that sugar burns, is going to go into the water and into the bomb itself. Um, now, the initial temperature of the water is 25 degrees C. Remember, the bomb in the water will be in thermal equilibrium, so the temperature of the um, calorimeter, that bomb calorimeter, will also be 25 degrees. We're going to burn the sucrose, and the temperature raises 2.32 degrees. Wow. Um, for one gram to move 1.5 kilograms, um, 2 degrees, this is going to release a lot of energy. Um, the calorimeter constant. So this is the energy that's absorbed by the bomb calorimeter itself. Um, you might hear it called bomb calorimeter uh, sometimes as well, um, but cal calorimeter constant. Here it is. For every one degree that you increase the temperature inside this bomb is going to absorb 837 joules, okay? Um, the specific heat of water, 4.184 joules divided by gram times uh, the Kelvin there. Now, a couple of notes. Remember, I can replace the Kelvin with degree C because we're changing temperature and Celsius and Kelvin change at the same magnitude. One degree change of Kelvin, uh, one degree change for Kelvin is the same thing as one uh, degree change for Celsius. Uh, they're asking two questions. What's the heat evolved? So right away, when I see that word heat, I'm thinking Q, all right? How much heat in this very specific situation is released when we burn just one gram of sucrose? And then it asks for enthalpy of combustion of the sucrose. So enthalpy, remember that's your delta H. And that is going to be in kilojoules per mole. It's the ratio, kilojoules per mole, which is going to be the same thing as Q divided by mole. It's taking this energy right here uh, that's released and dividing it by the moles that's combusted. We'll do that very, very last. The second thing that I wanna point out is remember on the calorimeter constant, it looks really close to the specific uh, heat capacity of water, um, the units. Notice what's missing, mass, the grams. Uh, this is energy that is absorbed for every one degree that you increase the temperature of that bomb calorimeter. We look at that as a whole system. I look at this whole thing as a system. We're not looking at uh, the mass. So it's related, but two different things. Okay, so let's begin. I'm thinking about transfer of energy. The energy from the sucrose is released into the water and the bomb. Conservation of energy. 100% of all that energy released 
exothermic is going to be absorbed endothermic by these two things, the water and the bomb. So let's write out our formula. Negative Q of the reaction. Now here, sometimes you'll see people write um, negative Q of combustion, or they do negative Q of sucrose. All the same thing, okay? As long as you know, it's referring to the substance that's being burned. So negative Q of the reaction, that's the energy released is going to be absorbed, can't create or destroy energy. It's all going to be absorbed by the water and by the calorimeter. Um, some people here will also put the word bomb, since we're doing a very specific expensive bomb calorimeter. Hey, by the way, styrofoam is an awesome calorimeter. You have to spend like $2,000 to get a better calorimeter than a styrofoam cup. So these bomb calorimeters are usually really quite pricey. Okay, now I am looking for, as a reminder, Q. Don't break this into Cm delta T. I'm looking for energy, so you don't break that apart. Common mistake that students will make is they'll right here do Cm delta T. That's wrong, because that's your unknown. You are looking for the energy right there. So leave that as is. We're going to have negative Q equals Cm delta T for the water plus, okay, breaking this out, the um, energy of the calorimeter, remember that formula is the calorimeter constant times delta T, times delta T. So looking over here, we have all of our information. We can go ahead and plug in. One thing that I want to point out, in this, equation to find energy, we're not using that one gram yet, okay? That won't come in until we find the per mole part. And sometimes students are trying to figure out, well, where did I put that one gram? You don't have to use that right now, okay? That, that's not, that doesn't fit anywhere in here. We're just looking at where the energy transferred, transferred into the water and into that bomb. Okay, so let's plug in. I'm going to change markers. It might be a little bit easier for you to see all of these numbers. Okay, so negative Q of the reaction equals specific heat of water, 4.184 joules by grams. I'm going to change that from Kelvin to degree C because I have my temperature in degree C times the mass of the water. It was big, 1.50 times 10 to the 3 grams times my temperature, final, remember this is T final, minus T initial, 27.32 minus 25, um, plus my calorimeter constant, that is going to be 837. Again, I'm going to change it to joules over degree C because my change in temperature right here was in degree C. Um, times, so final minus initial, it's going to be 27.32 minus the 25 degrees C. Sorry, just trying to keep it in the frame of the, the camera there. Okay, so let's look at the math and I'll take just a second to look at those sig figs as we do the math. Um, so order of operations, if I subtract these, we are going to get 2.32 and we'll truncate at the hundredths place. So I'm going to have three sig figs that I carry into this. When we multiply everything, negative Q of the reaction is going to equal, uh, let's see, 14,560. And I'm making a note, we're stopping at three sig figs, okay? So right above my five, that's where I'd be trun truncating is after the five. Plus, um, again, I've got three sig figs times my three sig figs, and this gives us 1,942. And again, I'm going to make a note to myself that I'm going to truncate after the third sig fig there, or there's my three sig figs. So now we add. Okay, here I multiply, here I multiplied. I change operations, so I have to truncate and then add. This is going to be the 14,000. If I truncate there, three six figs, one, two, three, bossy number tells us to round up, I'll get 14,600 plus, then right here, same thing, 
1940. Um, so remember, my sig fig is ending right here at the 6. Here it's ending at the 4. If we add this up, we get the 16. Let's see. 0, 4, 5. There we go. Did I do that right? Just want to make sure. Sorry, you guys. 5. 19 should come out to be so sorry 16 600 zero, zero joules when we add this together um did i do that right i'm just double checking we've got the zero that would be four that would be a five and a six yeah um so actually do you know what i didn't round right is what it was zero four five there we go um one six okay there we are. <laughs> uh, now, least digits when I'm adding is actually right here at the hundreds place. So if I truncate right there, that means that we're going to have 16,500 joules, okay? 16,500 joules to truncate at the least decimal place, which was at the hundreds place, uh, hundreds place. All right, now here's the big question. What did we find? What is that? Let's come back. It was Q of the reaction. Um, I'm going to go ahead and bring the negative sign over so you can say Q of the reaction is 16,500. That means for every one gram of sucrose, 16,500 joules is released. So there's our first answer. Now they could um, ask you the question and say, how much energy is released per gram of sucrose? Well, we burned a gram. So there's your answer. One gram of sucrose released the 16,500. Very exothermic. Now, the delta H. So a reminder on delta H. It is kilojoules per mole of substance. They want to know the enthalpy of combustion. So the uh, energy released to combust the sucrose. Remember, kilojoule per mole. So I gotta bring this energy to kilojoules. Well, that's easy. We're just going to divide by a thousand. There are a thousand joules in one kilojoule. So that will give us negative 16.5 kilojoules. Okay, easy enough. Now we've gotta find the mole part. So the mole part of this, um, I take my one gram of sucrose, C12, H22, O11, and I've got to bring it to moles. So the molar mass on sucrose is 342.34 grams for every one mole, and that's going to give us 0 0.00292 moles. All right, I've got my kilojoules and my moles. Now we can divide. Delta H will equal kilojoules, negative 16.5, divided by moles of sucrose, and that is 0 0.00292 moles. So I've got three sig figs on each of these. We'll report the answer to three sig figs. And the answer is 5,680 kilojoules per mole. Notice I didn't put a decimal, so we can't count that decimal at the end. We've got our three sig figs being most accurate, you would do 5.68 times 10 to the three kilojoules per mole. Okay, so two answers. Coming over here for my delta H, there it is. And I might add the negative to it to show it's exothermic. There's my delta H. And then right here, that was the energy released. That was my Q. Okay. Take a second to digest that. Take another problem, even take this problem and work it on your own. Good luck. You're doing good.